This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. Hey, welcome to another episode of Design Safe Radio. Good to be with you. And it's excellent to see my friend Elena Sutley from the University of Kansas. It's so good to see you again. We were just talking before we started recording. It's been a couple of years since the uh, the Thwarts Conference at University of Illinois. It's really good to see you again. Thanks, Dan. It's crazy how detached, you know, people have become over the, with not traveling over the last couple of years. But yeah, it's really great to see you too. <laughs> um, so we know each other fairly well, but there's probably not as much of uh, the, the audience that knows who you are and, and the amazing things that you've been up to in your career. So give us a little bit of background of who you are, where you're from, and uh, your area of study. Sure. Um, so like you said, I'm Elena Sutley. I am an associate professor in structural engineering at the University of Kansas. I'm also an associate dean for diversity, equity, inclu inclusion, and belonging there. Um, my, I'm, I'm from, I grew up in Alabama, um, in kind of Midwest Alabama. So we didn't necessarily experience hurricanes, which is what we'll talk about later, right? We didn't really experience hurricanes in my part of Alabama, um, but certainly Alabama experiences hurricanes um, quite often. Um, so it was definitely a hazard I was really aware of, but it was, I did my bachelor's and master's degrees at the University of Alabama in civil structural engineering. And it was- Sorry was about Monday night, by the way. <laughs> you can't win them all. It's fine. Nope, you can't, although they do try. <laughs> they try. Um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, yeah. Absolutely. So um, in, it was when I was working on my master's degree that um, the, the superstorm of tornadoes came through April 27, 2011. And that was kind of a really um, important, I would say, focusing event for me because it, it really motivated my passion for wanting to study natural hazards. And, you know, it really opened my eyes to the disparities um, in our communities and how different neighborhoods and people are disproportionately impacted and go through recovery processes. Mm. And, you know, I was, I, I got lucky, you could say, because then like that personal experience and that passion that developed from that personal experience intersected with an opportunity to start studying that. Right. So I, I got fortunate in that sense. And so my PhD, I was actually originally trained um, in earthquake engineering. So the professor, he didn't have a hurricane or a tornado project. He had an earthquake project, which was great and super fascinating. And um, we moved to Colorado State University where I did my PhD and I met a, a wonderful sociology professor there and started working with her. And it really took it from studying the behavior of wood buildings under extreme loading to understanding how these, the behavior of wood buildings impacts people. Mm. Right. Wow. And both of those parts being critically important and the first one not mattering at all without the second one, right? We only care about how buildings behave because it impacts people. Um, and so that's been the focus of my research since. And at KU, they've been super supportive um, of me being in that interdisciplinary space. I'm housed in a relatively traditional civil engineering department, but um, my research is, is mostly very interdisciplinary and collaborative with the social sciences. And so since being at KU, I've been able to um, expand my research program to studying other hazard types like tornadoes and floods and, and hurricanes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you've been doing a whole lot in uh, in your career, and it's been really fun to, to follow along the past few years since we've known each other. Um, but it, Recently, you've been researching the vulnerability of manufactured homes during hurricanes and wondering what kind of impact you hope that study will have. And then if, if there's ways that low cost housing can be improved to withstand these windstorms. because so we see all the time with, with every hurricane, including the ones we got in our backgrounds here, the, the biggest impacts are in those, those manufactured homes, low cost housing. And as you mentioned earlier, they're just disproportionately affected by these hazards. Yep, exactly. And that's where, you know, this is one of the things. So I studied, I was trained, um, struck on uh, my structural engineering background is, is wood buildings, right? Wood frame buildings. And so that's primarily housing and that includes manufactured homes. And that's definitely, as I started 
um, reading more and more in the literature, you know, watching these disasters take place in the U.S., you start to see, okay, it is manufactured homes over and over again that are being completely destroyed, that are not performing the way that they should be even too. And in tornado regions, right, this is where the most fatalities come from too, are people living in manufactured homes when the tornado comes, when it passes them. And so it just really sparked my interest um, because of that intersection. Um, you know, more than 20 million people in the U.S. live in manufactured homes. That's oh, wow. a lot of people. And it's weird because there's actually several weird things about manufactured homes because one of them is that the, their construction is governed by HUD, the um, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and their like code system as opposed oh. to other building codes, right? So it's it's not ASC seven where we get the loading. It's not the International Building Code. It's it's HUD that governs those guidelines um, for. Um, for res for uh, manufactured housing design, and then the other thing that's weird about manufactured homes that's re that's relevant in this context too is that um, is you know when you study the social sciences and specifically with respect to kind of hazards and recovery, um, it's their tenure, right? Most people who live in manufactured homes own the home, but more often they rent the land. And so that's mm. very different from site built housing where you're either renting the home or owning the home and the land is in that same relationship, right? So it's, it's different. And so that gets into some tricky um, elements when it comes to accessing resources, dislocating and being able to return and so forth. But wow. in, in any case, your question. <laughs> so that's why I find it really fascinating and important to study. Um, but, you know, the impact that I hope the research will have is, is you know, if you read my paper that I think um, brought you um, to ask me to do this um, podcast today, if you read that paper, it goes through kind of the history as best we could find of people studying manufactured homes, like in the engineering space, um, primarily in the engineering space. And you can see there's a strand. There's been a strand of research. It's a small strand, like one person for these five years and then a second person five years. You know, it's a small strand of research. And that's about all the attention that's ever happened. And I think wow. that's because that person or that, you know, maybe research group did so many, um, you know, they did a project, they did whatever, and then they got hit with a, a wall where they couldn't do anything more. The policies weren't changing. I mean, the HUD code that I mentioned is still using fastest mile wind speeds from the 1988 ASC 7. So like you just hit a wall and you realize like things aren't changing. Wow. Um, the research I'm doing is not having an impact, you know, a, a big impact. Right. And so that's that's what I would hope. That's my goal is to not give up on this research line, not to say that those people gave up, but just to, to not, you know, drop this research line and to ultimately bring more people's attention to it and to ultimately be able to change some of those policies to actually have some impact in the way that um, <clears throat> the design and construction of these homes um, is done. Wow. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Design Safe Radio. This show is sponsored by the National Science Foundation grant number 1612144. You can subscribe to Design Safe Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please leave us a review so we can improve the show. Please also help others find our episodes in iTunes. Thanks for your feedback and support. You can find out more about NARI at designsafe-ci.org, on Facebook at Design Safe Radio, or on Twitter at NARI Design Safe. <laughs>